you know, just been a lot going on, man. And, uh, you know, when you start getting into kingdom thought, kingdom terminology, kingdom understanding, you start separating away from the pack. Um, that's not always the most easiest thing to do, to be honest with you. It's probably a little bit more tedious than what people actually believe. And um, it's definitely been a tedious process for myself. You know, I really can't speak for other people. But it's definitely been a tedious process for myself. And so, uh, you all, excuse me, I was getting uh, everything set. Praise God. So, without further ado, let's get into this. Y'all ready? You ready? All right. So, uh, we are actually on two platforms <laughs> at this point. And, um, you know, we're just going to see what God's going to do. All right. So, today's message is kingdom exclusion kingdom exclusion now i want to say this i had a, i had a, i put a post up on our facebook page and on the page i literally uh the uh phrase was uh the phrase was uh well the phrase i'm going to be using today anyway uh was uh church is inclusion kingdom is exclusion and you need to hear that clearly Church is inclusion. Kingdom is exclusion. So when we start talking about the kingdom of God, we start talking about the kingdom of God message, we're talking about exclusivity. I mean, exclusivity. Exclusion. We're talking about being totally exclusive, uh, totally uh, isolated from the norm or from the regular. When we talk about church, we're talking about things of inclusion. Everything about the church model is to bring us in, is to pull us in, to help us come more in. And so when we start talking about the church model, everybody fits within that system. As long as you receive Jesus Christ, then, then, then you're able to come into the church system. Um, but in the kingdom model, as I'm going to show you today, everybody is not allowed to come into the kingdom. And I think this has been one of the one of the biggest, uh, biggest misconceptions, and so I'm going to go. Over, I'm going to go over a lot of stuff today, um, and I'm probably going to break down something you probably never heard taught before. Uh, so just stick with us today. Stay tuned. This is going to be a powerful word that you need to hear. All right, as y'all can see, I'm representing Tampa, TB, and so you know how it gets down. Tampa Bay is in the house. We represent in our city, our state, our area. We loving it. We loving it. All right, so. Here we go. Matthew 13, verse 11. Matthew 13, 11. We're just going to get right into this. And um, you're going to want to take notes today. This is going to be one of those messages that you're going to want to take notes on just to get a clear understanding as to what God is saying. All right. So here we go. Matthew 13, 11 says this. He answered, and I'm reading out the NI, I'm, I'm reading out the King James, uh, King, well, the New King James verse. Look what it says here. He answered and said to them, because it has been given to you to know the mystery, to know the mystery of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Okay, to them it is not given. Okay, so right there we see exclusivity. We see that the kingdom message was exclusive. Uh, Jesus did not preach, even though he preached to the masses in large, in large part. But 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 when we start talking about breaking down and unpacking exactly what the kingdom was, he didn't teach that to everybody. He didn't teach that to the masses. He only taught that message specifically to a specific group of people <clears throat> at a specific place. And, and, and really, and really, and really, in premises of isolation, he isolated uh, the message away from the mass of people who would come to actually hear the message of the kingdom. And so, this is something that we have to look at, right? As we begin to talk about this, we have to realize that the message of the kingdom that Jesus has given to us is a message specifically uh, that's geared towards a certain group of people. He only told the disciples what the true, what the revelation and the mystery of the kingdom really was. And so uh, let's go a little further to this. I'm going to read all the way down to verse 13. It says, um, but to them it has not been given. Okay, verse 12. For, and, I, and I, I, I'll read this out the NIV, all right? Let's read this out the NIV, 12 through 13. So uh, Matthew 13, 12 through 13. Matthew, uh, Matthew 13, 12 through 13. Look at this. 
whoever has, whoever has will be given more. And, and they will have an abundance. You want to highlight that. They will have an abundance. He came to, we might have life, and then we might have it more abundantly. Well, abundant life, we know according to John 17 and 3, life is the revelation or the knowledge of God and of his son. So when it talks here about they will increase even the more pretty much and they will be given even the more and they will have abundance. In other words, they will have life. So in the revelation of the knowledge of who Jesus is, there's an abundance of life that is given through this transition. As we come into a greater knowledge of the king and the kingdom, we are now walking in and getting closer to abundant life. He came that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. Well, actually, abundant life will only increase based on the knowledge and the revelation of the Son of God that we have. So, so depending on how much we understand about the king and the kingdom, that will then determine how much of the actual sustainable, abundant life that we have access to. All right. So look, look what it says here now. And they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, look at this, whoever does, uh, whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. So even people who do understand a little bit about the kingdom, what they do understand will be taken away from them. The little bit that they do understand will be taken away from them. He's telling us here, why? Because he says, whatever they have will be taken away from them. Well, why would it be taken away from them? It says, because whatever they have will be taken away from them. Now, here's why. Look at verse 13. This is why I speak to them in parables, talking about the crowds, the masses. This is why I speak to them in parable. Though seeing, they do not see. Though hearing, they do not understand. Right? Um, and so, even though people can see the kingdom, I, I should have said, even, um, even, even because people can hear the kingdom, doesn't mean just because you can hear the kingdom, it doesn't necessarily mean that 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 you're going to understand it, right? Right? Or or, or or um, just because you see it, I'm sorry, just because you see it doesn't mean that you have sight about kingdom, and just because you hear about kingdom doesn't mean you understand kingdom. There are so many people who I've come across who are trying to get me to believe that they understand kingdom, and the truth of the matter is they don't understand kingdom. They have no real concept of what true kingdom thought is, and so the truth of the matter is, do not be deceived in the hour that we live in. There are a lot of people who are saying that they're preaching kingdom, and they're not preaching kingdom. They're not preaching the kingdom of God the way that Jesus meant for it to be taught. And so we can and see one of the tactics of the enemy, uh, one of his deceptive tactics is is to teach a false doctrine, uh, to preach a false gospel, to uh, preach a false doctrine, and to preach a false kingdom. Right to teach a message about the kingdom that's really not relevant. It's not even biblical. Right, and I told you before uh, last week. And anybody who talks to you about the kingdom and begins to tell you about the kingdom and then they sum up the kingdom saying that the kingdom is all these natural things, they're not teaching you real kingdom. Uh, because kingdom, and I, and I write the scripture down, uh, Matthew 25 and 34 says that the king, the kingdom predated creation. So before the world was even created, the kingdom was already in existence, fully functional, fully operational, and fully manageable. Uh, it was already up and ready to go. And so um, there was nothing, when Jesus came, he is just revealing to us what has already been, what already has been established in the beginning of time. And so these are the things we don't understand. When we start talking about kingdom, this is the message of the kingdom that we really don't understand. We cannot articulate exactly what the kingdom message is. And this is why I come, we have so much, so many issues when articulating exactly what the message of the kingdom is. All right. So um, let's go deeper into this. I'm excited what I'm going to share today. I may end up losing this jacket here in a minute. Um, just so y'all know, I may end up just throwing it off. I don't know. Um, and so um, let's go deeper into this. Right. So, uh, Matthew 13, 15 through 16. Matthew 13, 15 through 16. Matthew 13, 15 through 16. Look at this. Matthew 13, 15 through 16. And we're right there. And I'm reading out the NIV, right? For this, for this people's hearts have become callous. They hardly hear with their ears. 
and they um and they um have closed their eyes otherwise they might see with their eyes hear with their ears understand with their hearts and turn which is repent they will repent and I would heal them. So a lot of this really comes down to a repent. And we're going to talk about that too. Um, I kind of mentioned this last time I was on here, but I'm, I really want to bring this out. The first, and you want to write this down. The first, the first thing you need to understand about coming into the kingdom is this. King, you cannot come into kingdom knowledge without repentance. When he says here, let's go over this again, because this is the reason why I come. And what I'm going to break down today, y'all, I'm telling you, you want to stay tuned because I'm going to break down something today that's so profound. And life changing, it's going to change the way that you see the gospel and the message of the kingdom all together. And we're going to see clear categories of where you fall and where other people fall, and those who are giving you the message of the kingdom where they may fall in that as well. All right. So now look at what it says here. For these people's, for these people's heart has become callous. So the reason why I come that he's going to tell you the reason why come people cannot hear, why come they cannot see, why come they cannot understand. First of all, we have to understand people cannot hear, see, or understand because of the callousness of their heart, right? So this is what stops people from hearing the real true kingdom message, okay? Um, now look at what it says here. They hardly hear with their ears and they have um, closed their eyes. Otherwise, so they close their ears, they close their eyes, and that's why they can't see nor hear the kingdom message. They can't see it, they can't hear the kingdom message because they close their they, they close their eyes and they close their ears. So you're not going to be able to hear the message of the kingdom if you've done either one of those. And I know you're thinking that's not me, but just hold your horse because I'm, as I begin to work through the tech today, I'm going to show you something that's going to show you clearly where you fall in where the kingdom teaching is. All right. Now, remember, why am I bringing this up? Because Jesus only preached one message. He talked about many benefits of the message, and we preach the benefits of the message. We preach all of the assets and the amenities of the message, but we don't preach the message. Okay, so the problem is we talk about things in the kingdom, but we don't talk about the kingdom. And so the problem is if you don't ever talk about the kingdom, then you're giving people a benefit package without them actually being employed. So it's irrelevant. It's like me telling you about insurance, but you're not a part of the company. What difference does it make? You cannot have access to it anyway, because in order to have access to those benefits, you have to be employed by this company, right? And that's the way we have been teaching the mess of the kingdom for years. We've been preaching the gospel like that for years. We've been preaching about Jesus. We've been preaching about all the things he talked about that are a part or that lead into or that are benefits of the kingdom, but we have not talked about the message he talked about. And so I'm bringing this up today to help you understand. Jesus only preached one message, and that message was the message of the kingdom. He didn't preach nothing else. He preached one message. So if you're preaching anything else other than the kingdom message, you are out of biblical context. Stop telling people about the benefits of the kingdom and preach the kingdom. The kingdom message is so important. Write this down. I'm going to keep bringing this up every week. Write this down. Matthew 25 and 14. The kingdom message was so important that Jesus said, Jesus said this, watch this. Matthew 25, 14. Jesus said this. Until the message of the kingdom is preached in all the world, the end shall not come. So if we haven't preached the message of the kingdom in all the world, the end won't come. The end will not come. And so the message is the message of the kingdom is not a church message. Hear me clearly now. The church is different than the kingdom. The kingdom is different than the church. They are not the same. They are not the same. So the message of the kingdom is not the message of the church. We have taught the message of the church in, in, interchangeably with the message of the kingdom. And nobody can see the true kingdom because we keep throwing we keep throwing the kingdom label on top of church concepts, church sermons, church benefits. And everything we're teaching about the church are benefits. We're teaching the benefit. He said, seek ye first the kingdom and, and, and your rightness or your rights within the kingdom, right? Seek the kingdom and your rights within the kingdom, and then everything else will be added. But we have mass sermons 
sermon series and books on the addition and not the seeking. <sighs> now, if y'all think this is hard, it's finna get harder. <laughs> I'm, finna go, I'm finna go a whole lot more deeper today. Okay. All right. And I may just, let me just do this. It was a good idea. It was a good idea. I may put it back on at some point. We'll see. But uh, I'm going to roll up my sleeve, sleeves and we're going to get into this, okay? All right. Y'all ready? Because we're going deep. We're going, we going deep today. You're going to get the full weight of the apostolic on my life today, okay? We're going there. All right. Here we go. Uh, stay in Matthew. So I read down a verse. I read down. And let's read verse 16. I said verse 16. But bless. Look at this. So, understand with their hearts and turn, which means repent, and turn, which means repent. Look at this, look at this. Uh, Matthew 13, Matthew 13, 15, look at this. For these people's heart has become callous. They hardly hear with their ears and they, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their ears, hear with their ear. I mean, they might see with their eyes hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and repent. And turn, which means repent, and repent. And repent. <laughs> and repent, and I would heal them. So, 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 so what Jesus is saying is the callousness of your heart has stopped you from seeing, stopped you from hearing, and stopped your heart from receiving the message of the kingdom unless you would repent and turn towards me and be healed. Let me make it simple. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God, hearing by the word of God. So listen to me. He's saying, listen, he's saying this. You cannot receive the message of the kingdom. Even though faith is coming by hearing, you can't hear because you callous. You can't see because you callous. And you cannot receive because your heart is callous. Because if you could hear, see, and receive in your heart, you would repent and I would heal you. So the healing of the eyes, the ears, and the heart is a sign of the reception and the receiving of the kingdom message. Lord Jesus, help us. The mere fact that your eyes are closed, your ears are closed, your heart is closed, means you cannot receive the message of the kingdom. So you understand why come Satan wants you to think about the trouble. He wants you to think about the problem. He wants you to think about what God can't do, right? Because he's trying to do what? He's trying to pull you in. And the Bible says in the book of James, we are we are tempted and enticed when we are led away by our own desires and love. So Satan is trying to draw you away by your own desire. He's trying to put enough lust around you, enough temptation around you, so you can be drawn away and become callous in your heart heart, in your eyes, in your heart, so you won't repent, so you won't receive the kingdom of heaven message, so you won't receive the message of the kingdom. Why is it so important to receive the message of the kingdom? Well, look at this, verse 16, but blessed are they, watch this, but blessed are your eyes because they see, blessed are your ears because they hear. Okay, so, so, so Jesus is telling them, see, see, you're able to receive the mess of the kingdom. Now, let me make this really clear today because I know there are a lot of people out there. You know, I know there are a lot of people uh, who are believers who believe that everybody can enter into the kingdom. News flash. Jesus did not even teach the kingdom message in simplicity to the masses. He pulled the disciples to the side and preached to them the kingdom. Why? Because, And he's telling right here because of the callousness of the masses' hearts, eyes, and heart, they cannot receive the simplicity of the kingdom. So Jesus, hear me clearly, he did not preach the message of the kingdom to the masses. Not in simplicity. He talked to them in parables or metaphors. That is important, y'all. We have to understand this. We have to understand it. So we're going to understand the message of the kingdom. Let's go deeper. I don't want to spend too much time on that because I got somewhere we got to go in this text today. And I want to get there before my time is gone. Praise the Lord. 
So Matthew 25 and 29. Matthew 25, 29. Matthew 25, 29. Matthew 25, 29. Look at this. So Matthew 25, 29 says this. <clears throat> well, you know what? Let me just go here because I don't feel like doing that all day today. Praise Jesus. <laughs> Y'all excuse me as I switch over to a different translation. Right. Hope y'all getting something out of this already. So Matthew, the 25th chapter. Chapter, I mean, verse 29. Y'all should be there. I'm just getting there. Matthew 25, 29. Look what it says here. For whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. Jesus is saying to us, even what you have received about the kingdom, he says, I'm going to take that from you. Y'all better hear me closely. Whatever, listen to me, whatever you have received, I'm going to take that from you. Do you hear what I'm saying? He said, whatever you have already received, I'm going to take that message from you. Do you hear what I'm saying? So he says, whatever you have already received, I'm going to take that from you. And then that which you have, I'm going to cause you, I'm going to cause you not to be able to uh, receive any more. And he says, so whatever you have is going to be taken away. And then he says, I'm going to turn around even after what you already got and give it to somebody else. So what little bit of stuff you understand about the kingdom, if you don't walk in what I'm going to show you today, what little bit you understand, you said, I'm going to take that from you. Wow. Jesus said, I'm going to take that from you. You know, when the little bit you understand, I'm going to take that from you. Y'all, excuse me. All right. So now, uh, look at this. Look at this. Let's jump to 1 Corinthians. And I'm moving quickly, y'all. I'm already gone here. And I ain't even got to my message yet. I'm just... 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, verse 10. 1 Corinthians, second chapter, verse 10. Look at this. I'm reading out the NIV. I'm reading out the uh, New King James Version. God has re 